Good morning. Hi, everybody. Happy Tuesday. We are so excited to see y'all. Oh my goodness. I'm so thankful to be back in a rhythm where it's Tuesday. I mean, it's Tuesday every week, but just <laughs> back with you guys and gathering, right. whether you're online or in person, we're just thankful. Yeah. We're thankful. Tuesdays with y'all are special. That, hey, that might be the title of your next book. That's right. My next one. Yes. <laughs> And my first one. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get right in. Jamie, remind us what we talked about last week. Well, last week we talked about how God is at work for our deliverance. Yes. And we pointed out that sometimes God delivers us from the storm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he delivers us to himself in the storm. That's right. And sometimes he delivers us through the storm. Such a great reminder, you guys. Yeah. He's always with us. And we hope that God showed you something last week that he was doing in yeah. your life for deliverance. Uh, if you're online, feel free to share in the chat. What is God up to in your we life? We would like to hear from you. We would. But before we go any farther, let's mm -hmm. start with a prayer. Absolutely. Will y'all pray with me? Father God, thank you so much for the way that you love us. Thank you that you are faithful. Thank you that you are our deliverer. Lord, we forget that sometimes and we get so overwhelmed with life that we either forget or we think that you're gonna deliver a certain way. And so Lord, thank you that your ways are higher than ours, yes. um, that you love us so much, you know what is best for us. So help us just to trust you in that. Lord, thank you for each woman that is joining us in this series. Thank you for reminding all of us, including Jamie and myself, that you are at work. Um, Lord, we are excited and expectant to see you working in our lives. So would you be with us today as we study your word? Um, Lord, we are just praying that every woman would have an encounter with you today. Uh, thank you so much for your son, Jesus, and it's in your sweet name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Okay, ladies, today we're going to be talking about God is at work in our relationships. And we've been using the analogy of people immigrating from the kingdom of the world into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. We've stated that um, the customs and the ways of relating to others in the kingdom of heaven are different than they are in the kingdom of the world. Yeah. So, so Barbara, how would you characterize relationships in the kingdom mm -hmm. of the world? In the kingdom of the world, I think we draw close to people who think like us, mm -hmm. people who have the same opinions, mm -hmm. um, people who maybe like the same thing. Like we're in the kingdom of the world, we're not really looking for somebody that's going to challenge us necessarily, <laughs> right? Um, I think that in the kingdom of the world, um, it, you know, it just looks different. Yeah. Because, I mean, in the kingdom of the world, people are saying, what can you do for me? Right. That's just right. the mindset. It's uh -huh. primarily focusing on myself. And what keeps me comfortable, mm -hmm. what makes me feel affirmed. Right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And again, again not, don't challenge me. Don't expect right. me to stretch or grow. Right. You know, people expect that relationships should either be mutually beneficial or that the benefits are going to weigh in their favor. Yes. Yeah. And, when and that's I'm, what you're looking for. No yeah, kidding. When like, I'm operating in my natural self, that's mm -hmm. what I want. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, even Jamie, you'll see uh, marriage vows that are being rewritten today, you know, a little more away from the traditional way. Um, it'll say, instead of saying, as long as we both shall live, mm -hmm. it has sometimes been written in the world, as long as we both shall love. Yeah. As long as it works out well mm -hmm. for both of us. So the world mm -hmm. is telling us, look out for number mm -hmm. one. But that's not acting like citizens of heaven. Well, if if we're citizens of heaven, it looks different. Okay. Um, it's thinking, well, what did Christ do for me? What, how can I show somebody else who Christ is? So. Okay. Look. So, what can you do for me? Mm -hmm. Versus, what did Christ do for me? Right. And because wow. Christ did that for me, yeah. How does that change what I do for you? Wow. Right? Well, let's so, talk about that. So let's look at this. Paul gives us something to look at in Philippians 2, verses 1 through 4. So let's start there. 
Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out for your own interests, but take an mm -hmm. interest in others too. Wow. There is a lot packed there in. Is a, there is a lot. You're right. And you know, the most natural mm -hmm. thing is to look out for our own interests. Right, right. I don't know about y'all, but that that is not something unselfishness or not trying to impress people with how great I am mm -hmm. or how important I am or whatever. Those things don't come naturally right. to me. Um, if you want to test, think about the last time someone showed you a group picture that you're in. Right. Who, Yesterday. Whose image <laughs> do you look What determines whether it's a good picture? You know, for how, how I look in it. Right. You know, that's exactly. the big determiner. Exactly. But kingdom people are living with supernatural That's power. Right. That's right. And just to give a little definition to that, Jamie, God has given us access to Christ's attitude. Yeah. Okay? In that passage we just read, it says, any fellowship together in the Spirit, it's our partnership with the right. Holy Spirit. Right. And that encouragement that we get from that partnership that's what enables us to have the same attitude as yeah. Christ Jesus. But we have to think about it, and we have to work at it, and it's a discipline. Yes, that's exactly yeah. right. You know, Philippians 2, 5 says, You must mm -hmm. have the same attitude that Christ right. Jesus had. Mm -hmm. And it's encouraging to me that we have access to Christ's attitude because we are in fellowship with His Spirit. That's right. Um it's a partnership, mm. a partnership. And the reason we're able to do it is because God is providing us right. access to the power mm -hmm. and the encouragement and the fellowship that, right. that he has with us. So another way of saying it is uh, Jesus is our role model. Mm -hmm. Paul quotes a Christian song that the Philippians knew. Mm -hmm. They knew yep. it well. Yes. And you know, that's kind of one reason why, Jamie, we've created a playlist for this series is mm -hmm. to remind us that God is at work. When we listen to that worship music, oh my goodness. when we listen to the lyrics, it's keeping our minds in line with yeah. Christ and His attitude. Yes. Yeah. And I, I was telling you on the way over here this <laughs> morning, I was just not living in the kingdom of heaven. I'll just say that. And I, I was just anxious about what we were going to say today. I wasn't sure I uh, was prepared enough. And you emailed me the playlist for, for God is at Work. And I started listening to it. And it was like the Holy Spirit right. just downloaded His peace yeah. to me I love as that. I was driving over. And I want us to take a moment to realize that God is always at work, which is why that playlist was sent to you at the time it was, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, God is orchestrating all of those yes. things, and He uses us to encourage one another. Yes. So, Jamie, let's read in Philippians 2, verses 6 through 11, okay? It says, Though He was God, He did not think of a Quality with God as something to cling to. Instead, Jesus gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and he died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of the highest honor and he gave him the name above all other names that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow mm -hmm. in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And wow. every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wow. That's a great role model. That is a great role model. And mm -hmm. he's not just the role model, he's the power giver too. That's right, but... that's right. And he's reminding us in, uh, Paul is reminding us in this, in this passage mm -hmm. to look at Jesus as that, as that model and to emulate that. Yeah. And so it yeah. says he took the humble position, yes. right? 
So let's talk about that. What is okay. humility? <clears throat> you know, humility is a conscious decision to place yourself underneath mm -hmm. someone else. It's mm -hmm. that decision of I could bless them. Right. Right? That's right. And you know, the way our um, the way our world has been acting lately, mm -hmm. we see people on every front standing up fighting right. for their rights, fighting right. that they get everything they deserve, fighting mm -hmm. to be in the place that's as high as mm -hmm. they could deserve. And yet he says that's mm -hmm. the opposite of what Jesus did. Right. He could have said, I'm equal to you, Father. Mm -hmm. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm as much God as you are. But he didn't do that. Mm -hmm. It says he took, he gave up his divine privileges. Right. And he took the humble position. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, being humble isn't putting yourself down and right. saying, oh, I, no, I'm not that good. I don't deserve that. Refusing to accept a compliment. Mm -hmm. um, C.S. Lewis said, Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. That's good. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. You know, I think humility, if we're talking about humility, we need to ask God, you know, to show me. Like, each of us needs to ask God, how often um, am I having friction or disagreements with other yes. people? versus blessing uh, them like what's my focus is my focus that I need to correct them uh -huh. or is my focus I need to bless them yes have you ever had one of those days or maybe weeks or maybe more where everybody was just being so irritating never never I'm oh, kidding I'm <laughs> kidding I'm so kidding <laughs> well I don't, I don't know when it was but it was when all three kids were home and everything uh -huh. and life could just get crazy and I can remember lots of times that I was walking on. Every everybody in my whole life is just so irritating. If they today. would all get it together. Yeah, they're all they are such a problem. And finally one day the Lord just kind of impressed on me. What is the one common denominator in this whole situation? I mean it's so weird that everybody right. is having problems except you, right. you know. And Jamie, I can relate to that. <laughs> I can relate to feeling like, uh, oh, oh, I'm the common thread. Yes. Okay, I need to be in yes. out. Yeah. Who's at the center of this circle right. here, you know? Right. And that's, I, he has used that so many times to be a red flag to me, to wake me up and go, okay. Someone's attitude needs adjusting. It may be some other people's too, but it definitely <laughs> is me. He doesn't let us off the hook. Because he loves right. us so much. That's right. Right. So, Jamie, I think maybe we should take a humility quiz. That could be fun. Ooh, or painful, but painful. we can do it. Yeah. Um, here, I, I'll start us out. Okay. Do most things need to be done the way I want them done? Well, sometimes I think my way is the best way, so... Well, if we didn't think it was the best way, we wouldn't do it that way. I guess so. But what did Jesus say? Or what did Paul say here? Make me truly happy mm -hmm. by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other. Mm. Loving. He doesn't just say agree with each other. He says wholeheartedly. Uh, that's why we need the power of the Spirit. Loving one another and working together with one mind mm -hmm. and purpose. Yeah. I mean, another question we could ask ourselves on this quiz, uh -huh. uh, do I need to be the star of my stories? That I mean, kind of hurts. It does, but <laughs> Paul reminds us, don't try to impress others. Wow. Hmm, yeah. We might step on our own toes mm -hmm. here. But, um, how often do I say, you're right, or I'm sorry, before the other person says it? Or do we only say, oh, I'm sorry, if the other person says it? Uh -huh. But Paul uh -huh. says, don't be selfish. True, he does. Um, how about this one? Do I frequently experience friction in ministries or friendship groups, small groups, or in my family? Mm. And is that something that's fairly common yeah. in my experience? Paul says, be humble, thinking of others mm -hmm. As better than yourselves. Mm -hmm. 
Well, and finally, I think we could ask ourselves, do I get offended often? <laughs> I mean, we are all yeah. going to face things that we disagree with right. or that are offensive or that we're convicted the Lord wants yes. to use our voice in, right? Yes. But Paul reminds us, don't look out for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. Yeah. And Jamie, I think sometimes if I'm in a disagreement with somebody, it has really helped me. And again, I haven't done this for very long. I'm, I'm still growing and learning mm -hmm. how to do this. But um, the Lord has gently reminded me at times, hey, remember, that's my child. Remember that that's my child and mm -hmm. they actually love me. Yeah. And yeah. so even if you disagree with them yeah. or you have been offended by them, remember that they're my child. Right. And even if they don't love him, mm -hmm. they're his, they, he loves them. That's right. Uh, in fact, you're not going to meet anybody mm -hmm. today or any other day that Jesus didn't die for. That's right. That's and right. we need to treat people, mm -hmm. even people that offend us mm -hmm. or rub us the wrong way, right. as though mm -hmm. they need to know Jesus loves them so much he died for them. That's right. You know, the gospel doesn't just call us mm -hmm. to think a lot of things about Jesus. Yeah. It calls us to think like mm -hmm. Jesus. Yes. And that is something that we can't do in our own strength. Absolutely not. Thank goodness. Thank mm -hmm. thank goodness God is at work to help us do that. That's right. And relationships are hard. <laughs> but ladies God didn't expect us to do it alone, right? Yeah, so let's right. talk about that. If we're going to be a model citizen mm -hmm. of the kingdom, Jamie, mm -hmm. then we're going to follow Christ's model. Right. So let's dive into that. Um, as we become more like Christ and our attitude looks like His, God is inviting us to work with Him as He works in us. We keep talking about that, but this is a partnership. Yes. Right? Yes. So in Philippians, if you have if Philippians is open to chapter two, let's read verses twelve and thirteen. Paul says, Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I'm away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. It's not about us. That's right. It doesn't depend on our strength, our uh, willpower, or, or our goodness even. Right, right. It depends on God giving us what we need. Girls, we're not working to be saved, but we're working because we are already mm -hmm. saved. And we want to lean in to this new identity God has given us. Right. Um, and let me just free you up. This is not an outline, Jamie, but like we also don't have to save other people. <laughs> well, we that's can, right. We can like, we can trust that God is doing that and working in them also. That's right. Right. That is exactly so right. So we keep kind of coming back to this analogy of an immigrant, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and we are immigrating into the kingdom of heaven. Mm, yeah. So an immigrant, um, they can live in their new country for many years, but they might stay on the fringes. Right. They right. Uh, have to figure out, how do I navigate a new culture? Right. How do I navigate a new system mm -hmm. uh, that's maybe more free than the one I came from? Right. How do I learn how to fellowship with people um, and find fruitfulness in, in this whole mm -hmm. new system, right? Mm -hmm. they, they're better off than they were in their old country, but they still are um, trying to navigate how to live in a right. new space, in a new culture. That's right. And they could come in from this dangerous place, and, mm -hmm. and uh, they're safe right then. They're safe the minute they get here. Right. But they might just hide away, insulated from everyone else in that mm. new culture, you know, yeah. and not enjoy the freedom and the fruitfulness and the fellowship that's there. Right. They just kind of live as mm. a hermit over mm -hmm. here. That's all they know. That's all that, yeah, because they haven't ever learned mm -hmm. how, to, how to relate in this new way, the new ways of this new country. Mm. Right. In the same way, when God does the work of making us citizens of heaven, mm -hmm. We're immediately, immeasurably better off. We're saved. That's right. As soon as we give ourselves to Jesus, mm -hmm. 
But God's desire for us, his best for us, is that we all learn to live mm -hmm. as citizens of heaven while we're still here on earth. Right. That way we can start enjoying the freedom mm -hmm. and the fellowship and the fruitfulness of life in the kingdom of heaven right now. We don't have to wait That's right. till we go to heaven. Oh my goodness. We can live heavenly lives. And that's such good news. Earth. And he wants mm. us to experience that, right? Right. Uh, right. But he's not going to force us to cooperate. <laughs> right. He's not going to force us to live this way. Yeah. We have to make a decision to work with God yes. and let him work in us. Mm -hmm. I mean, praise God that we don't have to muster up the desire to work <laughs> on loving people like Christ does. God yeah. will give us that desire if we're choosing to learn how to be citizens of heaven. Yes, yes. Right? You know, that reminds me, I don't think we ever stop needing his, his help right. in all of this. Right. And... Um, but I was thinking about uh, something that I could share, and because this happened a long time ago, I'm going to tell y'all. Okay. Um, when you know how it is when your kids are in school, sometimes parents don't see eye to eye about things. They don't have the same mm -hmm. opinions. They don't have the same tech, you know, approach to parenting, <laughs> etc. You know. Or, uh, uh, Jamie, a friend texted me last night from a school board meeting, yes. a comment that somebody else said, and I couldn't even, uh, you guys, like, it it was terrible. Was it? I'm sorry. Yeah. So. Well, a lady and I were in a meeting, and it was just, we had sort of an uncomfortable mm -hmm. moment. Um, nobody did anything sinful or anything, right. you know, but... Um, it just made me not look forward to seeing her again, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I was driving down. I still remember where I was on the street and everything and praying to the Lord as I, as I was driving down the street, I was just like, you know, it just, that just really upsets me. I, mm -hmm. I feel awkward about it and everything. And, and I'm, the thought came into my mind, you should ask her to lunch. <laughs> I was like, no, you don't. I I don't it want be a pleasant no, lunch no, conversation. No, you should ask her to lunch. <laughs> and I was like, Lord, why? I don't. And I'm not. I'm not proud of this, you know. But I was like, I. I don't even know if I like her. <laughs> and immediately, immediately, the thought came in my head. I don't remember giving you the choice. Mm. And so I did. I, I called and invited her to lunch. Mm -hmm. We had a wonderful talk. And I found out a lot of pain and a lot of burdens that this lady was carrying wow. that I would never have guessed. Mm -hmm. It helped me understand mm -hmm. some of the, what, the places she was coming from. Yeah. And we did never, I mean, I, I still would have done things differently than mm -hmm. she did. And she probably would have done things differently right. than I would. Right. And yet, I have felt a bond with her mm -hmm. ever since then. We're not on opposite sides right. of the aisle. We are sisters together right. and we're right. helping each other. Right. And Jamie, just to circle back, remember at the beginning of this lesson when we were mm -hmm. talking about how the kingdom of the world looks different than the kingdom of heaven? In the kingdom of the world, you never would have invited her to lunch. Oh, no. In fact, if it weren't for the Lord, I probably would have called up two or three people and talked about mm -hmm. how uncomfortable it made me and, right. oh, why would she be like, you know, mm -hmm. right. we, I would have not only, it wouldn't have been enough that I didn't feel comfortable with her. I was going to make other, I would have made other people uncomfortable right. with her, make, made her one of the them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And the Lord did a completely different work mm -hmm. in our lives. Just be, and and it wasn't because I wanted it. Right. It was because he God gave me the mm -hmm. desire. He put the desire in my heart, mm -hmm. and he gave me the power to do it. Really, even before the desire was there. Right. I love that. I love mm -hmm. that. So, I think that's an example of God asking us, mm -hmm. "Will you cooperate with me?" Right. Um, the unity that God wants among kingdom relationships is not a unity that's there because we all 
look alike mm -hmm. or think alike or act alike or have similar backgrounds even. Just look for a minute at the differences between the people in the church right there in Philippi. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had men and women in a culture where men and women didn't really interact very much. Right. You had Roman citizens who were um, controlling the native people mm -hmm. and you had people who were occupied by the Romans. Right. They're in the same church. You had slave owners mm -hmm. and you had slaves. You had a Roman jailer and you had former prisoners. Yeah. You know, I've heard it said, Jamie, too often we think that unity looks like uniformity. Yes. And it's not. That's right. You know? That's um, right. And God doesn't call citizens of heaven to maintain these kinds of relationships because it's easy. Mm -hmm. He knew it was going to be right. hard. Um, in fact, you know, we often fail to live out this kind of restored relationship, mm -hmm. even in the church. Oh. Um, but, I mean, there has been more division more argument, yes. more ugliness amongst Christians in the last, I'd say, two to five years even. Not just not just the last 12 months. Like, this has been going on for a while. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. And it has just been really ugly. And yes. that's why we said, I think it was last week, like, we've got to remember that Jesus' prayer for believers is that we would be one. Yes. One in purpose. One, yes. you know, in having this attitude that looks like him. Yes, that's right. And, you know, we have to remember that um, I'm editing myself as I'm, talk as I'm <laughs> pausing right Do now. It, that'll be kind of um, <laughs> we just have to remember what is most important. What is our identity? Mm -hmm. Where do we mm -hmm. get that? That's right. It's not from our political party. Right. It's not from a community organization or what school mm -hmm. we went to it's not from the color of our skin right our identity comes from Christ that's right and so everything else mm -hmm. has to come from what he tells us to do that's right and the way he asks us to mm -hmm. live um, this kind of love is not just automatically downloaded <laughs> into us when we come up out of the waters of baptism. No. That's something that we have to grow into. Mm -hmm. And we have to cooperate with God. He will not force us. He won't. He will not force us to live this way. Mm -hmm. But choosing not to cooperate with him, it hurts the church. That's right. It hurts our witness. Mm -hmm. It hurts Absolutely. us. Yeah. It hurts Absolutely. us because we are losing out mm -hmm. on the kind of love that God is offering us that no one in the world right. understands or knows. Right. And Paul gives us a really great example of what this, what you yes. just said, yes. in, in a in a real example um, and a shout out that nobody really wants to get, mm -hmm. but like it is in the book for everyone. So many times I've thought, wouldn't that be cool to have your name in the Bible? Well, let's see yes. how cool. It would be. <laughs> um, in Philippians four verses two and three, Paul says, "Now I appeal to Euodia and Syntyche." Please, like I can hear him saying, please, yes. because yes. you belong to the Lord. Don't forget that phrase, mm -hmm. because you belong to the Lord. Settle your disagreement. Yeah. And I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women, for they worked hard with me in telling others the yeah. good news. They worked along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, who names, whose names are written in the book yeah. of life. Yeah, the reason he asked them to work this out mm -hmm is that they belong to the Lord. Right. You know, when Jesus talks in John 17 about, this is how they will know mm -hmm. you are my disciples, if you love one another. Right. He's not just talking about people who agree with you mm -hmm. on every issue at church, right. or who vote like you, or who do things just the way you would like them to be done. Mm -hmm. That's so true, Jamie. And when we encounter people who are holding up Christ, and standing firm on the work Christ did for us on the cross, uh, but they rub us the wrong way maybe, or they say things we don't want to hear. Uh -huh. We need to remember because we belong to our 
because we belong to the Lord, yeah. it's our calling from Christ to learn how to love each other, how, right. learn how to settle our disagreements, mm -hmm. learn how to agree to disagree sometimes, right. because that's the most <laughs> loving thing we could do. Yeah, and that means not avoiding each other, not mm -hmm. you see them walking down the hallway at church or school or mm -hmm. work and you quickly, you know, figure out a way to go that you don't have to run into them. It means looking for things that we can truly appreciate about mm -hmm. each other. It means seeking to get to know the other person mm -hmm. and understand what life experiences they have that make the two of you see life so differently. Right. You lean in. And it also means, Jamie, that we're not going to talk behind each other's backs, right? Mm -mm. Even on social media. <laughs> right. But we're going to encourage other people um, to, we're not going to, I'm sorry, let me back up. We're not going to encourage other people to take our side. We're not going to yeah. build up this army on our side and against the other yes. person. Yes, absolutely. And by the way, did you notice what he said about these women? That they had diligently mm -hmm. served and worked in the kingdom for a long time. Right. Even people who have walked with the Lord a long mm -hmm. time, who are invested in church, who have given so much of their time and energy mm -hmm. to Him, need this daily yes. to ask, ask the Lord, how am I measuring mm -hmm. up? How am I lining up with your will in the way that I relate to people that are hard for me? Right, right. You know, we just don't outgrow the need for Him to, mm -hmm. to direct us or to guide us or no. to work in our own hearts. And I think part of that is because what His goal for us is this doing life along with Him. Right. He doesn't right. want to just give us, you know, an infusion of power and then we can just go off without Him. Right. He wants that intimate love relationship That's where right. we are constantly checking up with Him. That's right. So how do we work with God to restore and renew our relationships? Like, let's not just leave us in the, the disagreement. This is of the, rubber, the rubber meets the road <laughs> section. <laughs> but let me first say, this is not possible without the Holy Spirit inside of us. Yeah. Okay. Right. And Paul gives us some instruction uh, later in the chapter, in uh, chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Do everything everything you know he had to put the word everything in there do everything <laughs> without complaining or arguing so that no one can criticize you live clean innocent lives as children of god mm -hmm. shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people yes yes mm. and you know i just think that stop complaining and arguing mm -hmm. is such a great thought because the truth is most of most of my problems that I complain and argue about mm -hmm. are not because something is inherently right or wrong. Right. It's because I want it done my way. That's right. You, know, you didn't load the dishwasher the way I wanted you to. I went, one day this week, Morgan buttered some toast, and I came along behind her and scraped ex excess butter off of it. <laughs> Okay, what is that? Was it How toast is that for her or toast for you? We were sharing it, but <laughs> I fixed hers too. <laughs> church struggles, church disagreements, mm -hmm. most of the time they're not about what is right or wrong. They're about how do I want it done, right. and it's different from how you're right. doing it. Most arguments are about who is in control of this situation and yes. I want control, right? Yes. Yes. Um, it's, it's more about control than anything else. Mm. And in most arguments, even if we're right about the issue, we could be wrong in our delivery. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And so the problem between these two women and the people in the church who took sides in the argument. Because he Let's, wouldn't have brought it up if, they, if it wasn't dividing the church. Right, right. So they had an active participation in this too mm -hmm. and Paul is saying the problem um, is is between these two women was not that one was teaching something wrong about Christ if that had been the case then Paul would have described that and he would have addressed that issue mm -hmm. um, so you know whatever they were mad about the biggest problem was not what they were discussing it was how they were treating right. each other and putting themselves above the other person right right 
Now, I know that none of us has enemies <laughs> because good Christians know not to have enemies. But if, if there is someone who makes your blood pressure rise just by thinking about the latest thing that he or she did, when we realize that there is a person we have in our life or on Facebook or social media mm -hmm. who affects us this way, mm -hmm. it's a good thing for us to stop and think about what the advice that we see in 1 Peter 5, 5. Peter says, all of you, clothe yourselves, put it on mm -hmm. and wear it yeah. with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud. Mm -hmm. But he shows favor to the humble. That's right. I don't want God opposing me. Mm -hmm. I, right. I want let those that you know tension tension in your shoulders or the oh let me see what she said today. You know <laughs> let let that all be mm -hmm. a a flag that you go oh I'm oh yeah mm -hmm. it's time for me to put on some humility right now. Well, and I think the reason why it's described like that in the Bible, it'll say, you know, put on humility, put on compassion, is because it is something that we have to work at and we have Absolutely. to access the Spirit. It's not something we can no, do on our no own. No one is accidentally right? humble. Right. <laughs> no, it's, that's just not our nature. But we can remember, Jamie, that Jesus' way is the way to joy. That's mm -hmm. what he is teaching mm -hmm. us, right? That's right. And in Philippians 2, verses 16 through 18, Paul says, Hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not yes. useless. Yes. But I will rejoice even if I lose my life, pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, mm -hmm. just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, yes you should rejoice and I will share your joy. Yes. That's what he wants for us. That is it. He mm -hmm. wants that fullness of life mm -hmm. that he offers in the kingdom of heaven. That's right. He never asks us to do things to take away joy. Right. Even the things that, you, even Satan saying, whispering in your, don't do that, you'll mm -hmm. be a doormat. Don't, you know, mm -hmm. That's because he's afraid. That's right. He's afraid of what we will find in the joy of the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. if we obey what Jesus is calling us to do. That's right. So, mm. let's get back to the situation you're in right now. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's upsetting you, somebody that you don't like, somebody that drives you nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you willing to trust mm. Jesus? Are you willing to work with God as he works in you right. so that your relationships will bring you glory. Yeah. I think we ought to pray about that. I, I will I would love for us to pray about that and thank y'all so much for joining us today and we it's our prayer that you see God at work in your relationships mm -hmm. because he's working in you, right? Mm -hmm. So let's pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you that you are bringing us together each week to study your word also to recognize that you're at work and to encourage each other that you are going to give us the desires to look more and more like your son Jesus. Lord, I just ask right now that you would show each of us a relationship. Maybe it's a relationship of somebody we're struggling with um, where our heart maybe doesn't look like yours in the way that we're responding. Lord, we want to bring you glory. Lord, show us if we're being selfish. Mm -hmm. Show us if we are trying to advance our own interests, our own opinions. Remind us that this person that you've put on our hearts right now this morning, they're your child and you love them. Lord, would you show us ways that we're trying to impress people or trying to make ourselves look better? Lord, convict us. Convict us if we find ourselves um, complaining 
-hmm. or arguing. Lord, it doesn't even have to be out loud. Sometimes it's just in our thoughts. Would you convict us that this does not look like your son? Lord, show us situations where relationships are not showing a light in a dark world. Remind us that we are your light. You are partnering with us to bring light into a dark world. Mm -hmm. Lord, would you show us what you want us to do, who you want us to see, who you want us to listen to, Lord, and give us the desire and the power to obey you, Mm -hmm. to walk in obedience, and to love people the way Jesus has loved us. Lord, we love you and we trust you, and it's in your sweet name that I pray. Amen. 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 You guys, we hope that you have a great week, mm-hmm. and we will see you back next Tuesday. Okay. Keep out, keep looking for God. That's right. What, he's at work. <laughs>